Hello, this is Steve Olson, the Manager of Training Services for Mesa. In this video, I'd like to show you an easy way to add some automation to your design by linking parameters between Inventor files. In the example I'm going to show you, I have basically a sheet metal box that is basically a base and a lid, and I want these two things to fit nicely together, and I don't want to have to be constantly changing the parameters of both of them, or if I need to change the size of the whole box, that I don't want to have to change all the pieces individually. I like to be able to change one set of parameters and have all the parts associated to that uh, update. Now, one thought you might be having is, why don't you just put all the parameters in the top level assembly and then link them into the two ch children parts, or the two child parts. Inventor will sometimes uh, complain of a cyclical relationship and prevent you from creating that link. So what I'll do here, just to make things simpler, is I'll make another part file, create my three parameters, and then link them. And then I'll show you how to then connect them to those, um, those files. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create another standard part file here. And I'll save this. I'll call it, I'll put it into my link parameters. I'll call it box parameters. Save it. And let's go up here to parameters. I'll add a numeric one called box width. We'll give it a value of, let's say, five. Add a numeric one here called box length. We'll give it a value of seven. And we'll also call one box depth. And let's call let's set this for like three. So I'll say done here. I'll save those. I go over here to my box assembly and go over uh, to one of my parts. Go into its parameters. Down here at the bottom, you can see I can say uh, link. So I'll say link. And it'll ask for, am I looking for an Excel file? Or I can switch to an IPT IAM. So there's my box parameters, IPT. Say OK. It's going to ask for which parameters I want to bring over. So I can select the ones I want. And the first thing it did is, as soon as I clicked on that, it said, OK, is that parameter set for export? I always forget to check that box. But it's not a big deal. As soon as it says, OK, well, that needs exported and you're asking it to be brought over, I'm going to have to export it to do that. Is it OK to, to set that up? And it's fine. So I'll say OK. I'll set my three parameters. I'll say OK. And now you'll see that there's a user parameter. There's a line item here, uh, box width, length, and depth. For some reason, I need to change that or delete it. You can see I can delete the folder or I can edit that and point to something else. But now I got box width, length, and depth. Now one thing I will point out is I'm very conscious to try to name my parameters different in this file versus the file I'm going to be bringing them in. If I name them the same thing, it start putting an underscore one after that, which isn't the end of the world, but it does, does create like a little bit of confusion. So I try to avoid that. So here for base width, I'll set this to box width. And I could even, if I don't want to type it, you can see here I can click in the cell, say list parameters, and those show up here. So I'll say box length. Oops, got those other values in that cell. Come down here to where the flange height was set as the depth. And delete these. Use list parameters and set that to box depth. Say done. Must have typed something wrong there. Let me fix that. There we go. Let me update here. And you can see I got a little bit of a size change there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Go back over to my box assembly. I'll open up the lid. 
do the same thing. Say link to box parameters, bring them all over. And the lid depth, I'm going to leave it one inch. Maybe that's a parameter for the lid that we're always going to leave that way. You can see there's those parameters as well. So I'm going to go ahead and say done. I'll update. You'll see it's fitting. I'll say save. Close this one. Close the box itself. Go back to top level assembly. Now one thing that you'll see as see an issue here is that the constraint that holds the box lid at the right depth is not correct. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to also link the parameters here to that same box parameters. And realistically, all I really need is the depth. So I don't have to bring them all. I kind of do that as a habit, but I don't, I definitely don't need to bring them all. And this box depth here is actually the size that I'd want for the um, for that offset constraint. So I could say negative box depth. Get everything to update. Now I do have a little bit of an interference here. So what I probably should do is open up that base. And I could even say that it is for the base depth, I could say base depth minus maybe 0.25. That way I get that right offset there so I don't get the interference. Get everything to update. And just to show you, let me save this real quick. If I then jump over to box parameters, change the sizes here. Let's say I want to go down to four. Let's make this eight. Let's make this two and a half. Done. Save back over to my assembly. It's asking for an update. And we got a little bit of a difference there. One of my equations must be off in the base. Yeah, for some reason the base height never got switched. There we go. Update, there we go, that looks a lot better. Box parameters, let's set this down to three. Set this down to, we'll go with six. Save, box assembly, update. And now you're seeing the benefit. Now it's now updating the way I expected it to. Well, that's all for now. Hopefully you found this information helpful and something you can apply in the near future. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me at my email address there on the screen. And as always, thanks for watching.